Okay, now let's look at angles of elevation and depression. Okay, so I have two concepts to remember here. The first one, angle of elevation, I'll show you over here. Basically, say for example, this is me. Okay, it's just an example and I'm not very good at drawing. That's me. This is a, I don't know, a butterfly. Okay, so say that's me looking up to a butterfly. Okay, the angle in which I look up to the butterfly at is the angle of elevation. Okay, so this angle here, the angle in which I look up at is the angle of elevation. That's basically it. Okay, so it's not very difficult. That's the concept, okay? The angle in which I look up at. Now, the angle of depression I'll show you over here. Say this is the butterfly and this is me. The angle of depression is the angle in which the butterfly looks down at me. Okay, so with angle of depression, I always like to draw a horizontal line from the object, or from the butterfly in this case, and then the angle in which it looks down at, this angle here, is the angle of depression. Okay, that's basically it. Those are the two things you're going to remember here, and hopefully you can actually tell by the names, okay? Elevation looking up at, depression looking down at. Okay, so hopefully that's not too difficult. Now with the angle of depression, can you see that this horizontal line here and this line here is parallel? Okay, these two are both perfectly horizontal lines, so they're parallel. So therefore, this angle is equal to this angle because they're alternate angles, okay? These two are alternate angles, so they're equal. All right, so basically the angle of elevation from me to the butterfly is the same as the butterfly, the angle of depression from the butterfly to me. Okay, but those these two are different concepts, so make sure you remember them individually. Okay, so have a look, guys. And this is all you need to know. We have to we're going to apply this onto our questions now. So let's try the next. Let's try the first question. So question six: the angle of elevation of a tower is forty degrees when measured at a point hundred meters from its base. Find the height of the tower to one dp or one decimal place. Okay, so. It says the angle of elevation of a tower is 40 degrees, so we have a tower, and when measured at a point 100 meters from its base. Okay, so from the base of the tower, from a point 100 meters, we have an angle of elevation of 40 degrees. I'll just show you the diagram. If this is a tower, I don't know how tall it is, so I'm just gonna label it the X, okay? And then it says, when measured at a point 100 meters from its base, so 100 meters from its base, that's the base of the tower. 100 meters is approximately there. So I'm just going to label this length as 100 meters. Now, the angle of elevation from that point to the tower, so that looking up to the tower, is going to be 40 degrees. That's the angle of elevation. Okay, and that's basically it. That's the diagram. So it's a really simple looking triangle, a right angle triangle, isn't it? Okay, so we have to look for the height of the tower x. So how are we going to do that? Well, this is the angle, 40 degrees. This is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. So I'm going to use my trigonometric ratio of tan. Okay, so tan 40 is opposite x over adjacent 100. All right. And now all we need to do is solve for x. So I'm simply going to multiply both sides by 100 and get 100 times tan 40 for x. Okay, and simply guys, just put that into your calculator, all right, and you should get 83.9 meters. Okay, and that's the answer. 83.9 meters is the height of the tower that we're looking for. Okay, so that was it. So hopefully that wasn't too bad. That was pretty simple, wasn't it? And the key thing here is the angle of elevation from this point looking up to the tower, which is 40 degrees. Okay, so have a look guys, and we'll move on. So question seven says a roof is pitched at 45 degrees. A room built inside the roof space is to have a 2.7 meter high ceiling. Okay, now how far in from the side of the roof will the wall for the room go? Okay, well basically the first thing it says a roof is pitched at 45 degrees. So this is the, what a roof looks like, okay? The roof will look like a triangular shape. And basically, if it's pitched at 45 degrees, the side um, angles of the roof will be 45 degrees, okay? Because it's that depth, that much deep, 
Okay. Now, if there's a room that's built inside that roof and it wants to have a ceiling that is 2.7 meters high, okay, so the, the room should be 2.7 meters high. All right, so I'll show you the diagram. This is what it looks like. This is the roof, it's pitched at 45 degrees, so this would also be 45 degrees, right? And it says that what the room has to be, the room inside the roof has to be 2.7 meters ceiling, uh, meters high. So this must be 2.7 meters high. So the roof will probably look something like this, where this is also 2.7. All right, but we'll just concentrate on this side because we don't really need to know the other side. The question is how far in from the side of the roof, this is the side of the roof, would the wall go? For, will the wall for the room go? Okay, so this is the wall. This is the, what we're looking for. From the side of the roof to the wall, that's what it is. Okay, so have a look, guys. So X is what we're looking for. All right, so have a look. And we know that this is 45, the height is 2.7, so I think we can probably find that pretty easily. So drawing the diagram after you drew that, probably it's a bit simple. So have a look, guys. For this angle, this is the angle 45 degrees. We've got the opposite side, and we're actually want to looking want to look for the adjacent side. So what I'm going to do, tan. Okay, tan is opposite over adjacent. So tan 45 is opposite 2.7 over adjacent x. Okay, and now again to solve for x, x will be 2.7 over tan 45, right? And again, guys, all you need to do is put that into your calculator. So you should get 2.7, all right? You should realize that tan 45 is probably 1, so you get 2.7 over 1, which is just 2.7, and that's the length of this x. Okay, so from the side of the roof, this is how far it's from the wall of the room. Okay, that's basically it, guys. Have a look. That's question 7. Okay, so make sure you understand and interpret the question really properly so you can draw a nice, decent diagram. So that's the answer to question seven, so let's move on. Okay, question eight, A, says a flat veranda roof two meters deep is three meters up from the ground. So we're talking about a veranda here. So maybe in an apartment, I don't know, if the veranda is always sticking out of the house, isn't it? The flat veranda roof two meters deep is three meters up from the ground, so it's three meters high. Um, at a certain time of the day, the sun makes an angle of elevation of 72 degrees, okay? The sun makes an angle of elevation of 72 degrees, sketch the diagram to represent this, this is part A. So let's start off by drawing a diagram. So, have you understood the question properly? The veranda, as I said, is going to be sticking out of the house or what apartment or a flat, it's going to be sticking out and that veranda will be two meters long or basically two meters deep. Okay, and that will be three meters up from the ground, so it will be three meters high. And at some time of the day, sun moves, doesn't it? Sun will not be at one particular point. But at one particular time of the day, the sun makes an angle of elevation of 72 degrees. Okay, which means you're going to consider shadows here. The sun, if it casts, if the sun casts the light um, to the veranda, it will cast some kind of shadow, wouldn't it? I'll just show you over here. Okay, so this is the veranda that's two meters deep. Okay, this is the maybe the house and the side it's two meters deep. It's three meters up from the ground, so this is three meters. And this is the sun. The sun shoots light down and makes a 72 degrees, okay, as an angle of elevation. Alright? So this whole thing here would be a shadow, okay, because this part is definitely covered by the veranda, so this one's definitely a shadow, and this one will also be a shadow because it casts the light, and this whole part here that it makes with the sun is also a part of the shadow, okay? But basically, that's what the diagram looks like. Have a look, guys, and try to understand it, okay? And we'll go on to B to find how much shade is provided on the ground by the veranda roof at that time to two decimal places. So basically, it's asking us to find the length of the shade. This is the whole thing here is the shade. Okay, I'll just call that whole bit X. Okay, so we wanna search for what X is. Now, 
Do we have enough information to find X straight away? I don't think so. So what I'm going to do is start off by using tan 72. Tan 72, okay, will be, well basically this is, this length is also 3, isn't it? So tan 72, I'm just going to look at the small triangle over here. Tan 72 is opposite over adjacent. So 3, which is the opposite, over adjacent. Adjacent is x minus 2 because this whole thing is x, x, sorry. And then this length is a 2, so therefore this is also 2. So therefore just this little bit here is x minus 2. Okay. So therefore I'm going to go tan 72 is 3 on x minus 2. Alright. So what I'm going to do is solve for x step by step. So x minus 2 is simply 3 over tan 72 degrees, right? Okay, x minus 2 is 3 over seven, uh, tan 72 degrees. Now, x will just be, move the negative 2 onto the other side to make it a positive 2. So x is simply 3 over tan 72 plus 2. Okay, so see how I've got, actually got x without even looking at the whole big triangle. So I only had to look at this little triangle and I've actually got to a point x. So now guys, put that into your calculator and see what you get. You should get 2.97 meters and that's the answer okay so x this whole length here is 2.97 meters and that's the length of the shadow that the sun casts towards the veranda okay does that make sense guys so have a look i'll rub this off And that's basically what the solution is. So try to always have a good diagram, okay? That's why I keep stressing in this section. Have a good diagram. So that was question 8B. Have a look, guys. Okay, so question 9 says the angle of depression from the top of a 100 meter cliff down to a boat at the foot of the cliff is 30 degrees. Okay, so find the distance from the foot of the cliff to the boat, correct it two decimal places. Okay, so basically guys, it says the angle of depression, okay, so the angle in which we look down at from the top of a 100 meter cliff, okay, so from a cliff that's 100 meter from the ground, we're going to be looking down at the foot of the cliff, so down to a boat at the foot of the cliff, okay, so I'll show you what the diagram will look like, so I always like to start off by drawing a diagram, that's what it's going to look like, okay. So that's my cliff, which is 100 meters tall, all right? And um, this is the boat. And from the top of the cliff, I remember how I always like to draw a horizontal line from the object. So from that point, I'm gonna draw a horizontal line and the angle in which we look down to, 30 degrees, that's the angle of depression, okay? So that angle there is the angle of depression, which just says it's 30 degrees. Okay, so that's the angle in which it looks down at to the boat, and this is the distance from the foot of the cliff to the boat, which I'll just call X. Okay, and that's what we're going to look for. All right, and remember, guys, I said that this is perfectly horizontal, this is perfectly horizontal, so therefore these two lines are parallel. So therefore, these two are alternate angles, which means they are both 30 degrees. So this is also 30 degrees. Okay. So this is the triangle we're going to be concentrating on. Hopefully you guys can see that we can use another trigonometric ratio. That's the angle. I've got an opposite. We've got an adjacent. So we must use tan. Okay. So tan 30 is going to be opposite 100 over adjacent x. And therefore, x is simply 100 over tan 30, right? So just make the x a subject. And then just put that into your calculator, guys. You should get x as 173. 0.21 meters. Okay, so that's the distance from the boat to the foot of the cliff. Okay, so that's our distance x, which is that. Okay, that's the answer. So have a look at that, guys. That's question nine. All right. So that's it. So I hope you remember those angle of elevation and angle of depression.